welcome everybody to tonight's Hook Up on Music podcast. I am glad to be here because boy, do I need to talk about some music. I've been built up. It's been a, a full week. Last time that we convened, it was on Thanksgiving. This is the last day of the month in November, November 30th, and I am glad to be spending it with you. My name is Tony, and we're going to talk about a lot, a lot of awesome stuff, a lot of new music. We're also going to, unfortunately, shed a couple tears. Um, but uh, all around, I am very, 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 very excited for tonight's show. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be full of lots of goodies, things that you may want to listen closely, you might not have heard before, and other special things that even, even animals like the lions might tune in and, and see what's up. So thank you, everybody. And uh, let's see what we got on the board first here tonight. Um, unfortunately, um, sadness has, uh, a double dose of sadness has struck the hookup on music, unfortunately. Uh, Jordy Walker, okay, um, passed away. And you may be, know who that is, you may not. He is an amazing guitarist for the group Killing Joke. Um, Killing Joke um, has been around since the late, late 70s, which is when he joined the band in 1979. Um, Self-titled album. If you're looking to hear something a little bit more um, awesome, you know, Jordy is definitely your man on the job. He plays lots of riffs that stick in your head. And, um, you know, I never have a problem listening to some killing joke. Awesome, awesome guitar riff. Um, definitely sticks in your head um ironically that guitar riff has even been um well labeled that nirvana has uh um well taken a little something from that where you're saying to yourself nirvana taken from somebody else well that that is the claim on that one um can't believe that uh they're um going down the route to make those um accusations but i guess it is um, true. I guess the conflict comes that, um, you know, Nirvana thought that the riff um, in Come As You Are was very similar to that one that you heard at the beginning of 80s. Um, Kurt was nervous about it, um, but uh, nobody followed any copyright infringements. And, um, you know, because of personal reasons, um, I don't know. There's a lot of different things. Um, there was a lot of something that w was brewed, um, but that's kind of not why we're here. We're not here to talk about that. We're here to honor the man, the myth, the legend, um, Jordy Walker, who, if you go through all their albums, that self-titled album, Fire Dances, is really, really good. Um, me, personally, I came on the scene on an album called Pandemonium that came out in 1994. Um I believe I saw the song on, it was either 120 Minutes or um, uh, Headbangers Ball, but the lead track on that um, title track, Pandemonium, really, really awesome. Caught him on a recent stop in Indianapolis with Tool, but again, really, really, really sad to lose um, Jordy Walker. So rest in peace, Jordy Walker. Um, today, November 30th, we also lost somebody great, a great, 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 great musician. And it's just, again, um, it's crazy how time passes. But Shane McGowan has passed away. Um, I um, just, just really, really, really. If you are into music and you are not into the pogues it's 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 something that i think we we should change and um songs like um you know fairy tale of new york um it, it is definitely you can feel it in his voice his, his singing um his his many of his songs very 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 much influenced with irish history um just just lots of different life in 
um, Ireland and being Irish. Um, really, really shame to lose somebody at the age of 65. Um, but um, going back and like we always talk about listening to these albums, um, debut album Red Roses for me is really, really good. Of course, Rum, Sodomy, and Lash. And The Lash, I should say, is a really, really, really good one that I think you should um, take some time and, and sit down and listen. Um, songs stick with you. Um, really, 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 really stick with you. And I, I, I'm i sad that when we lose somebody like this and it's right before showtime, you find out because you can't really do that deep dive on the Pogues that you would usually do that we will end up getting to. Um, but again, rest in peace and, um, you know, check out those albums. We've got some newer bands we're here to talk about tonight. We always say that we got new music, and we've got a pair of newer bands here for you tonight. Cusp. Um, definitely a band that I think you should listen to if you're into something a little bit heavier, with a little beauty, fuzzy, um, mixed all together seamlessly like you can't even tell. Those are always the bands that I love. Um, relocated recently to Chicago. But uh, got some albums, okay? Uh, you Can Do It All is the one I've been listening to um, quite a lot. Got some good stuff. Um, you know, tracks like Okay, Win, My Two Cents. Definitely worth the price of admission because, um, you know, if you're looking to rock, they're, they're a really good, really good band that, that's out there doing that stuff. And they got other stuff, too, not just that one album. Um, they got an album called Win, Sight Unseen. A lot of different stuff that I think that, if you are into um, something new and looking for something different, check them out. Um, also check out, if you are around and have the opportunity, um, check out this other band called um, Destiny. I don't want to mess this up now. Destiny Bond. Okay. If you just go out and look at some of their uh, front cover and their artwork, you're going to see um, just just really, really, really good, um, you know, <laughs> again, a band who is heavy, a band that is hardcore, um, a band pushing the limits. And of, of the music that I've listened to for them, um, Be My Vengeance, okay, is, is, is definitely worth checking out. Um, if nothing more, like I said, to admire the um, artwork. But... Songs are really, really short, okay? Majority of the songs are all under two minutes long. There's only two that are above two minutes long. Um, ten songs. Um, influences by bands like Slapshot. Um, if you haven't taken a listen to them, I would do that also because that's what I did to kind of listen to what, what we are talking about tonight. But a uh, couple new bands. Um, Cusp and Destiny's Bond. Definitely worth your time. Please check those out. Um, Again, one is hardcore, one is more of a little bit loud, rocking, got some really good quiet moments, and all around, um, just two two really good bands. Um, you know, recently a buddy of mine went to the show, The Messingers, okay, and there was a band on the bill called Microwave, okay. Um, I am really impressed with this name. I don't know why I never thought of it before. I, it's It's simple. Um, a, a band from Atlanta, Georgia, but watching some of their live clips really, really impressed me. Um, they've been around since 2012, so they're a little, but you know, not new, um, newer to us here at the Hookup on Music. But the name drew me in, took a listen. Um, definitely something that I think you will want to also take a listen to. Got three full length albums. My bet is, is the last one came out in 2019. They've got to be working on something if they are a touring. Um, but again, again, check them out. Check them out. Um, good, good, good live stuff. Good, good live stuff. Um, but again, the band is Microwave. MTV Unplugged. Uh, let's 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 talk about this tonight. We're here to just recently. It had its its little bit of an anniversary, and by a little bit of its anniversary, I mean it had its anniversary in november 26 it premiered in 1989 can you believe this show is this old i cannot believe that this show is this old but it is and time flies and 
Can't believe it. I think I'm TV unplugged. A lot of people think a lot of different things. Um, personally, there's a couple things that I think of. That song I think of firstly. Um, because being 12 years old when this is being released, it's definitely something that I think um, it stuck with me. I mean, I was, I was, I was... You know, you're right there and you're being introduced to music, the music that's going to shape you for your life. And it's some of the it's, it's some of the most influential bands of all time. That's why it's, it's hard sometimes not to talk about a lot of these bands because they're so influential. So you've been there on the first the first ground running to hear what it was like. But MTV Unplugged had lots and 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 lots of good stuff. You know, lots and lots of different artists and diverse artists. Um lots of great stuff you know i remember everything from eric clapton to mariah carey to rod stewart to tony bennett to allison chains to pearl jam okay and you know personally um you know when you start even thinking deeper into Ten Thousand maniacs or page and plants no quarter is considered um part of the unplugged family but what i think is really really cool is that um the lasting of it there's so much of mtv that is kind of uh slipped away to the wayside for reasons that we are all know why okay um they gave up playing music um their shows you know their staple shows they gave up on that that had music involved mentioned earlier 120 minutes headbangers ball um all of that um is definitely what i believe um is makes this a great um a great thing is that they were able to s keep it um in a way that um is stuck into what i would believe the minds of music fans like and has also turned a lot of bands just to do some unplugged stuff i mean kiss when kiss did that unplugged without their makeup on and then peter and ace came out and it was they were did the like a reunion not like a reunion it was a reunion um really 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 cool um you know it, it, what it was cool about it was is some of the artists that i mentioned like uh rod stewart you know unplugged you know at that time i don't know how much unplugged stuff rod could do but i know a lot of his music could translate to that but nirvana you know unplugged in new york doing a doing a, a whole album unplugged is is almost what i would deem to be you know for some bands that are, are strictly rock or hard or, or is is really um gotta be a, a chance that they're taking that that when it comes down to it you say man i tip my cap to you because you know if you're always constantly rocking out and you're gonna say here in the early 90s we're gonna do something a little bit different you know you know and a lot of these performances for me they are, um, you know, I, I know I might have a lot of people that go against some of my, my, my ideals to some of this, but, you know, I know Nirvana has a lot of good performances, but um, just them playing Unplugged, I don't know one better right off the top of my head. It, it really sticks with me. Um, Alice in Chains, that's another Unplugged that really, really, really sticks with you if you know what's going on in the in the background, Okay. Here's a band that is really tearing at the seams because of a lead singer struggling, you know, and when this guitar hits, it's, it's out of this world. <laughs> Nutshell opens up the, uh, unplugged in, um, by Alice in Chains and you say to yourself, Wow, you know, you want to hear something or see something that really, really tugs, you know, this is gonna do it. You know, this is gonna this is gonna be the thing that that that, that might make you tear up. And um, you know, it, it it really always never has any problems making me tear up personally because well, you know, that's what music is. You know, music is sometimes an emotion that 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 uh that, that you can't you can't hold back. 
And I believe in this Unplugged in New York, it, it definitely brought a lot of that out with a lot of bands. Um, it made bands maybe a little bit more vulnerable to things. Um, you know, just sitting in front of an audience up close is something that you're not really, um, you know, maybe some bands not used to. But in that first year in 1989, there are some that are really, I didn't even know until doing research for this show. You know, it's interesting that the very, very first episode had Squeeze, Sid Straw, and Elliot Easton. Wow. You know, you're saying to yourself, um, is, 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 you know, wow. You know, this is what's going to make this show grow. I love Squeeze, but Sid Straw and Elliot Easton. But the first 13 episodes um, were hosted by American singer Julius Shear. Um, as it went on, I don't remember too much because when I caught on about the Nirvana phase, a lot of that. But in that first year, you had Aerosmith, Elton John, Sinead O'Connor, Poison, Joe Citrion, and Stevie Ray Vaughan um, all making appearances. I don't believe they were um, maybe full episodes. I believe they were like maybe together. Um, but really, 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 um, you know, kind of kind of cool. Um but as we go on, you get the Mar Mariah Carey doing a, a really, really good Unplugged, okay? Um, she does a cover of I'll Be There, does really, really awesome. Court Eric Clapton's Unplugged, definitely been known for a long, long time. As, as it, it won six Grammys. Um, Tears in Heaven, you know, even of all the shame that Eric Clapton has put himself in recently, um, Tears in Heaven is a good song, unfortunately, about um, the death of his son. Um, but, you know, good, good, good stuff there. Um, Queensryche, metal band Queensryche did uh, an Unplugged. We're playing Silent Lucidity to really, 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 really awesome, awesome. If you haven't, again, sat down and listened to Silent Lucidity on just a, a quiet, quiet night, I would say you should do that. Or if you need a quiet, quiet night, I suggest you should also do that too because it, it it's nice, you know? You know, and as the 90s start rolling and everything else, you like I stated, you get everything from Midnight Oil and Soul Asylum, okay? Um, but that Nirvana one, when it came along in 94, you know, you, you're getting the me puppets joining them, you know, you're, you're playing David Bowie, you're, you're just, you're just... And these are lesser known covers too. I mean, at the time of the David Bowie and myself, even I, I was not at all familiar with the, um, you know, with a lot of these songs that they played, you know, and that's what I think draws me in about the performance. It wasn't like they went and they just said, um, you know, we're going to mail it in and just do smells like teen spirit lithium and, you know, and that, and we'll call it a day, you know, they, they put some work into it. So kudos to them. 93 Stone Temple Pilots. Kudos to, to that performance. Um, very unique rendition of, of, of Wicked Garden. Um, Creep is great. Seeing um, Stone Temple Pilots at the top of their game. Scott Weiland looking healthy, looking really, really good um, performances. I think that is a really solid MTV Unplugged. And then as they go along, it just keeps keeps going. And, and later in 94, a one-off special called Hell Freezes Over um, with the Eagles. MTV de deemed this part of the Unplugged um, special series, and that was a huge hit. I remember getting that for Christmas. I can't remember if I asked for that or not, but um, the Page and Plant, you know, that was really, really huge. Um, what was huge for me was that John Paul Jones – was not invited to be a part of it. I was kind of shocked when that happened. Um, but, you know, as it goes along, you you get, like I said, the kiss. You maybe get a little cranberries. But the show starts to kind of, um, you know, you know, after the Alice in Chains in 96, you know, Oasis did a little bit. You know, it, it kind of starts to, uh, it fades a little bit. You know, you're getting your Alanis Morissette's, um, Alanis Unplugged. You know, not really. No, Lord Hill does a good one in the early 2000s. Um, Jay-Z does a really good performance. Um, you know, uh, Queens of the Stone Age even does a little bit. And I am, I'm really, you know, that's not one that you really remember or talk about a whole lot. 
I mean, through the years, you got everyone from Carly Rae Jepsen to Sean Mendez, and um, most recently, um, Tony Bennett, Lady Gaga in 2021 gave a great, great performance. Um, 2022 was the last one. Um, 21 pilots performed. Kind of um, interesting to to see that. Uh, Corn, you know, real. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked at who was jumping down and in line to hear and listen to Corn Unplugged. Um, I don't know if that one really tickles my funny bones too much, but uh, there are a lot of Corn fans out there. So, um, and I was an, a Corn fan at some time. I said, unfortunately, because they do have some good songs. Um, and I'm sure we will talk about corn more at some point. Um, but you know, the flagship will always be that, that Nirvana show, I believe. Of course, lots and lots of classics sprinkled in. If there's some, maybe I missed, please let me know. It was very, very exciting to go through all these acoustic, um, you know, all this acoustic, acoustic, um, jams, you know, I'm a big fan of acoustic, um, stuff, you know, Black Crows has done, done an album called Crowology where they play everything on acoustic guitar. Cage the Elephant has done a whole album acoustically that I think is just really, really awesome. Um, Metallica, every time they've unplugged, you know, their unplugged stuff, Low Man Lyric, Mama Said, no, you know, nothing else matters, you know, sign me up, you know, I'll just listen to them even play the beginning of Fade to Black. But again, we love the acoustic stuff. And if there's anything we miss, please, please let me know. Because, you know, who doesn't like a good acoustic? You know, everyone's used to seeing somebody playing acoustic somewhere. You know, it's good that a show came together and was able to put it together properly. I am very, very, very impressed with that. Um, just like I've always, always been impressed with the guitar work of one Ricky Wilson of the band b-52s just just an amazing guitar player okay amazing guitar player gone way too soon in 1985 at the age of um 32 you know you're you're, you're not, great 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 musicians shouldn't be gone that long but unfortunately this is you know we lost ricky wilson in this time and 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 when losing him, what we lost was just, just, just great, 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 great guitars. You know, that guitar riff right there. If you don't know that guitar riff from my own private Idaho, you know, definitely, definitely go and listen to that whole song. Awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. Um, but his guitar lines, you know, always really stick out in their songs. Okay. Um, the way he, he, just the tunings. Okay. And there's a lot of good, good, good music. Okay. Um, by him, you know, before he passed away and, um, you know, he had been though playing music since 1970. Okay. He had been, um, him and Keith Strickland, who was also in the band, um, played together with music before the B-52s had even started, um, doing different little stuff. And, you know, I can't say enough, you know, um, the song that I was, um, introduced to was give me back my man. This is a good one here. This guitar riff. Really, really good stuff. Um, please, please, please check that whole song out. Um, it rocks hard. Um, Ricky Wilson rocks, man. And, um, you know, going and coming from Georgia, you know, um, he was the leader of the band, I believe, before he passed away. He seemed to be the one piecing together the music. Um, you know, he cited children's records, the mamas and the papas, as his source of inspiration for his musical career. And you can't hear that in his guitar playing. Um, you know, you can't hear that at all. And that's what I love. I love just the new way that they were able to come up with. Uh, based upon what I just told you in that guitar. Um, final album um, he was a part of, Whammy, isn't their best work. Um, Bouncing Off the Satellites, um, the album that came after, there's some really good introspective stuff that uh, 
you know, if you get a chance to sit down and listen to, um, there's a song called Ain't It a Shame. And I think it's just just a really, 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 really good song. And I think it's really indication to a band um, dealing with the loss of a, just a great musician. You know, and that's exactly what Ricky Wilson was, was a great musician, you know, a great person. He seemed to, everybody he was around seemed to just just radiate that energy, you know, just 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 radiating off of him, which is is great. So those first couple albums, amazing debut album, amazing. Um, second album, equally, equally amazing. Um, you know, whammy, you know, you you might like whammy, you might not like whammy, you know, but definitely album one and definitely Wild Planet, check out. Um, and check out all his guitar stuff. Really, really awesome. Um, it's always awesome to to kind of talk about any kind of music. That's why a lot of times I'll be out there and I'll be seeing people just down talking. You know, I try, try, try not to down talk. And if I do, I try to catch myself, especially recently. And I have been known to be to be, you know, the man. Not who sold the world, but the man who sometimes maybe will make a joke or two at a band's expense. And we don't want to make jokes at band's expenses because, well, bands are working hard. You know, I also see people knock people for not being able to go to a lot of shows. You know, you go to one show, you go to a couple. If you can't because you have kids, that's okay too. Listen to that music. Spin those records. Talk to people about it. Don't be a musical, you know, you got to do this and you got to do that share it talk about it that's what's great about all of this you know starting in december we're gonna have some really really awesome guests we're gonna have some really really good times that i'm excited to share with you all out there and that's 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 why we're put here for shared experiences you know recently the rolling stones put on their their concert it's 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 coming to town people making wisecracks you know, who goes sees this band anymore? Who pays this money? Well, you know, I'm sorry. You know, one day there will be a time where, yes, Creed and Three Doors Down is coming to town this summer. Some people are excited about that. I may be not very much excited about that. I did see them at a later, earlier time, and I've had my time with them, and there's no problem with them. But if you're telling me that the Stones, when they're gone, this is what we're going to get instead? Well, I don't know. I'm not really too excited about that. But, you know, here we are. You know, here we are together talking about things that, you know, excite us. Like coming things coming up and things that don't excite us. You know, being stuck with bands that are usually could be caught at your local county fair. But, you know, that being said, those bands that I mentioned also still do have some couple good songs. So um, I like to measure the whole body of work. You know, but my point in saying all of this is that we are supposed to be growing and listening and always pushing for new stuff, going back and listening to old stuff. It's kind of like an octopus. Got many different hands going, doing many different things, you know, and here at The Hookup on Music, we're trying to do a lot of different things. You know, we're trying to, you know, share with you. We're trying, we're out there on the street, we're at record stores and we're having a great, great, great time meeting people. Um, we appreciate all your support. We appreciate all of your following and we do definitely appreciate, you know, anytime you have any suggestions, if you would ever like to come on and share anything, would love to have you, um, you know, and that being said, we unfortunately have come to the end of the road tonight. No, we can't. I want to be able to be able to sit here all night and just listen to Killing Joke. Please go back and listen to Killing Joke and listen for Jordy because unfortunately we lost him. Um, please, 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 please listen to the Pogues for Shane. Um, please listen to those new bands I was talking about. You know, lots and lots of good stuff. You know, you got that cusp. You got that Destiny's Bond. You got that microwave. Even though I told you they're not too new. Um, we also, the MTV Unplugged, always, always, always good jams there. And, of course, uh, our man Ricky Mills, Will, uh, Ricky Milson, Ricky Wilson 
and those awesome guitar riffs. But uh, thank you so much for joining me. Um, again, I want to thank everyone listening, and I want to thank everyone who's a part of um, the hookup on music. And um, also want to thank everybody who is a part of the Penguin Sadistic Studios and all of the hard work that's put being put in. Please go to um, Sadistic Penguin studios.com and read all the awesome articles that are being posted lots of good stuff from wrestling just got the new survivor series stuff being posted on there awesome 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 articles and all the other cool shows here on the penguin sadistic studios youtube channel thank you so much everybody my name is tony and i do 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 appreciate you guys joining me for episode 46 until uh, next week, well, when we have an amazing guest that I can't wait to share with you, everybody, please enjoy your night and keep that rocking and keep that rolling. And we will definitely see you again. Good night.